stopping by for the second installment of Tastes from Home, which are um, uh, recipes I'm sharing to, uh, to give you a little flavor. I thought I was losing myself there. Now I'm just giving you a little flavor of what I do here in California and what you can maybe do in your home kitchen with ingredients that are pretty much in your pantry at this point if you've been um, staying your distance like we have uh, in California. Just finishing up our fourth week. So um, I just want to start this out before I talk anymore and uh, give a shout out to all of the healthcare workers, all of the nurses, doctors, anyone who's working in healthcare, all of the essential workers that are in our grocery stores and trying to run their restaurants and trying to run their businesses to keep all of us safe. So um, from sleepers, from me, thank you, thank you so much. So. Anyway, just want to get that out of the way and say that. So if you're here with me, I thank you so much for stopping by. And um, anyway, I'm going to um, I'm going to like start a little bit slow here and give people a chance to get settled into the um, the live. I know some some people said they were having a little bit of difficulty with it, but uh, if you're seeing me in your feed. There should be a button underneath me that says live and all you have to do is click that and you can join in on our our little bake session today. So, um, so yeah, taste from home. Today I'm making a boozy upside down cake. Now, I've been making upside down cakes myself for more than 30 years. I actually have a cookbook which I'm going to get out and I'm going to show you the first recipe that I really really fell in love with here. Um, this recipe is from Dean Faring, and he was the chef in the 80s for the mansion on Turtle Creek, which is located, I think, just outside of Dallas. Anyway, there you can see I postmark and use my recipe book. So this recipe in here is for a walnut chocolate upside down cake. And I have been making this since Mark and I got married in the 80s and it's delicious. So I, I love upside down cakes and they're super easy to make. So I'm really happy to share this recipe that I've made for you today. And um, as I said, um, if you don't have your ingredients, if you're not going to be baking along with me, that's fine. This is going to be live and I'll share links at the end so that you can stop, my, stop by my blog and actually pick up the recipe. But if you are baking along with me, go ahead right now to sleepersgourmet.com and you'll see on the top there where you can click on the blogs this will be the newest recipe for boozy upside down cake and um, you know print it out or just keep it along with you there so that you can, can follow put, along I can put the link in the um, comments oh cool Mark says I'm, I'm like got my hands full at this point even though they look empty so Mark says that he's actually going to post the link so it'll be there for you but uh, anyway thank you so much Mark so yeah, we've got some people here and I think everybody's ready to get baking. Now, um, back to upside down cakes, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about them. You know, they've actually been being baked since medieval times. And um, so it's a, it's a pretty ancient recipe. And it was basically born, like most recipes, out of necessity because people had one pot. And that's what we're doing today. We're actually going to make this cake very traditionally in a cast iron skillet. So yay, we're not going to be dirtying, dirtying up a million pots and baking dishes and so many things. You're going to love this. But um, anyway, so yeah, they've been, they've been being baked since um, medieval times. But um, they really came into popularity at the early part of the 20th century, like around 1910 or something like that, when um, people in, pineapple, in the pineapple business uh, figured out a way that they could actually slice pineapples into circles and can them. And that's why a pineapple upside down cake is one of the most popular cakes 
to this day. And um, I want to tell you, if you're not making the recipe today, Upside Down Cake, the national day for Upside Down Cake is April 20th. So mark your calendar. And uh, if you don't make the recipe today, definitely make it on um, National Upside Down Cake Day. Is that and 420? <laughs> Oh my God, Mark, <laughs> it is 420, the day that everybody's upside down in so many ways is and actually, and they, the and they might even have the munchies, not, you know, not judging here, but um, yeah, 420, April 20th, I didn't even think about that, but April 20th is National Upside Down Cake Day, so if you don't bake today, Bake by then and share your cake with me. Just tag Sleepers Gourmet on any of our social media. You can you can use Instagram at Sleepers Gourmet. You can go to Facebook. You can go to Twitter. Um, I put the link in the um, comments. Oh, cool, cool. Um, <laughs> all right. So the link to the recipe is now in the comments, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started with things here. So this recipe is super basic. It actually, I hope you can see, I've got like, oh, yeah, there, there we go. Okay, great. Getting used to this, the angles here in my kitchen. So I've got all my, all my ingredients out here, and you can see they're really basic things. We've got brown sugar. We've got butter. I'm going to be using bananas as my fruit today. And have flour, baking soda, a little bit of vanilla, some spice, and um, oil. And, and salt, I think that's everything, but I will go over it really quickly. Now, the one tricky ingredient that's in this recipe is buttermilk. And if you're like me, you, all, you see a recipe, you want to use it, and then it's like, oh my God, it's buttermilk. I don't want to run out to the store and get it. And whether you're making your pancakes or whatever, whatever recipe you're baking, if you don't put buttermilk in it, they're going to be a little bit flat. So I probably five, seven years ago, found a hack for making my own buttermilk, and I'm gonna show it to you right now. So, check this out. This, let me get a spoon here. This is buttermilk that I made right here in the kitchen from scratch. And if you look really closely, you can see the characteristic chunks that happen in buttermilk. Buttermilk is just a little bit of a, a soured milk. So um, anyway, I made mine in advance, but I'm going to show you how to make, make buttermilk from scratch. So all you do is you pour about one cup of milk. I'm eyeballing it here only because I know what I have and I know my, my my container, but if you don't know your container, definitely use your measuring cup, okay? And I, I pre-measured out my lemon juice. Now, if you don't have lemon juice, you can also substitute white distilled vinegar. So you take the one cup of milk and you pour in the one tablespoon of lemon juice and we'll give it a little stir. And I'm going to just set it aside because this will be ready in about 15 to 20 minutes to use in your recipe. Oh my gosh, I want to say hi to some of the people here. Okay, so I see I've got Patty and Chris, Judith, some of my girlfriends are here and I'm so excited. Thank you so much for showing up. Oh my gosh, hi Craig, watching from Ohio. We've got people watching from Northern California. Hi Lydia. Lydia's our daughter and she's... um. She's sheltering in paradise uh, up in the beautiful Sonoma County. What so town? stay sa safe. Oh my gosh, don't make me say the name of the town because I. I just, it's it's Sebastopol, but I just want to say. No, it's Sebastopol. Is it Sebastopol? Anyway, I don't know what the name of the town is where my daughter's living because my husband. Um, his family is from a small town in Maine called Sebattis, Sebattis, Maine. So every time I think of whatever the name of that town is that she's in, in Northern California, Sabatis Pool or Sebastia Pool, um, whatever, uh, I say it wrong. So anyway, hi, Liddy. Oh my gosh, Marissa, one of my old neighbors, I believe she's tuning in from, um, is it outside Seattle, Marissa? You can tell me, I can't remember. But anyway, 
Hi, I'm so happy that you're here. I've got friends in from Louisville and uh, and right across town, I see I see my friend Judith. So hi. Okay, I'm so glad you're here. And there's other messages popping up which I I can't I can't focus on. So I'm gonna get back to my recipe. So if you're baking along with me, I hope you've um, had time to get the recipe and um, gather your ingredients because we're gonna go ahead and get started. And the first thing we do, I'm gonna fire up my. Um, my cast iron skillet. My cast iron skillet. <laughs> Duh. Well, I, I'm going to tell you guys, this is really funny. <laughs> this is a secret. Okay, we're in my home kitchen. It's the second time I've done this. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, it's the like 400th day of, of our um, distancing. Um, I'm a little off. And I decided a couple hours ago, oh, I should wash my stove, even though nobody can really tell if it looks dirty on television. But what I did was I washed my stove and I actually threw the knobs in my dishwater. And they're not on the stove right now. So I was struggling a little bit with getting my, getting my, my pot going here. But anyway, I'm going to adjust my heat. I did um, I did preheat my oven. So go ahead and preheat your ovens at home to 350 degrees if you're baking along with me. And wash your knobs. Oh my god, look, he's washing my <laughs> knobs. You do not see this on the Food Network. I just want you to know that we are now, them. we're now in uncharted territories. Anyway, so, so I'm going to let my, my pan heat up here. And I'm going to add a quarter cup of butter. Now I've pre-cut it, and if you have the little sticks, you know that a, um, one stick is a half a cup, so a half a stick is a quarter cup. We're going to get that going. And uh, I'm going to have to watch, watch my temperature till I get by. All right, that's pretty good there. Okay, so we're going to let this butter, this butter melt. And um, anyway, oh my gosh. I've got uh, people in from New Jersey. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for stopping by. Um, this is so great. I, I love this. And um, I'm so thankful that you decided to show up. It really, it really means a lot to me. Um, I have a, a real passion for cooking, as, as many people know. We've been, we've been running Sleepers Gourmet for 10 years now and growing, growing, growing. But in addition to that, I'm also a culinary historian where I lecture around Southern California about um, food ways and historical um, historical topics pertaining to food. And I'm also on staff with the Pacific Food and Beverage Museum and the Museum of American Cocktail where I get to go out and do events and outreach with them, which I'm so proud to do. And um, honestly, I'm a, I'm a bit of a food nerd. I have, I have hundreds of cookbooks and I am always like, like innovating and and studying a recipe to find out the origins of where it comes from. So I'm I'm so happy to share this with you. Here. Oh my gosh! Look, the technical guy. He's here helping me get my knobs in place. We have knobs now. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, that's a little behind the scenes that you aren't going to get on HGTV anytime soon, kids. So I hope you enjoy that. All right, so. So my butter's melted, and to my butter, I'm going to add one third of a cup of brown sugar. Now, in these times, um, you know, all the shelves in the stores, you know, sometimes you go and you can get an ingredient and other times you can't. So um, don't fret about it being light brown sugar or dark brown sugar. Dark brown sugar has a little bit more of a molasses taste but either one will do just fine in this recipe. And um, regular sugar if you really had to. Yeah, you know what, you really could. You could use regular sugar if Brown you sugar. wanted to in this recipe because what we're doing is we're actually caramelizing the sugar. So the flavor's a little bit more intense with brown sugar, but if you just had one third cup of white sugar, toss it in the pan with the butter and um, let it cook. <laughs> now, this sugar, it needs to melt, and you can see it's getting there. I'm trying to adjust my, my screen here so you can see these kinds of things. So you can see it's melting. I'm going to let it be on the, uh, on, the, um, on the heat here for another minute or so. 
And um, to, my, to my caramel that I'm making, I'm actually going to add about a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now you can use, um, you can use any salt you like, but we sell salt, so I have a, a, a great selection of salt. And um, today I'm using our pink Hawaiian, which is a salt from the Hawaiian Islands. It's a beautiful rosy pink. And you can see it. Pretty, see? And um, anyway, it, um, it actually has just a little bit more intense mineral flavor than your typical kosher salt that many people have in their kitchen. Let me see what we got going. Cocktail events. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Cocktail events. You guys should come out. Um, once we all can. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there it is. This is our. Oh, there. Look. I can see it. You can see it. I can see it. I can see it. Can you see it? Anyway, Pink Hawaiian. You can get it on our website at sleeversgourmet.com. And um, if you visit our website, everything is 20% off site-wide until further notice. And um, with every $10 purchase, we're actually giving $1 to the World Central Kitchen, which is the um, charitable wing that was started by Chef Jose Andre. And he has been doing remarkable work for at least five years around the globe, helping feed people in crisis. Uh, he's working his butt off in the boroughs of New York, and we're so proud of that. He, um, he served thousands of meals to the Diamond Princess up in um, the Oakland area about a month ago. He's, uh, he's got a setup here in Los Angeles. He's helped in Nashville, Puerto Rico, Australian fires. I mean, go to his website, um, worldcentralkitchen.org, I believe is what it is, and see more. Okay, so... Okay, Mark's putting the link up. All right, so now I I can see that I've got a caramel going on my sugar, and it's looking really good. The salt's in there. So now I'm going to set this aside. Hey, can I be a, a, just for a second? Oh, thank you. Okay, so that this is what you're going for. This is what you're trying to achieve here when you're creating this caramely sauce. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Okay, set it down. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is talk about fruit. Um, I, I call this, you know, my recipe is a boozy upside down cake. Uh, today, I'm going to be working with bananas again because, uh, well, lots of bananas are around in people's kitchens. And they're, you know. Wasn't it just because we could find those at the store? Oh, yeah. I actually found bananas. They had bananas. Yeah. And, and, and they don't always have bananas. So it's kind of exciting to run into them. But anyway, um, so I'm going to take four bananas. And let me get a plate out of here so I can have something to sit this on. And I'm going to peel my bananas. And then I'm going to slice them lengthwise. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So lengthwise, we're going to go right down, right down the center like that. And then we're going to place them on top of the caramel with the smooth, you know, the, the smooth side down. So there we go. It's one. Two. Oh, I'm doing this. Let me see. Those skillets are heavy. Way to step it up, Mark. Oh, hey, you know what? I cannot, I cannot say or emphasize enough how essential I think a cast iron skillet is in the kitchen. I literally use it for everything, from baking this cake to sautéing to stir fries to. I, I mean everything. It, and you know the the great thing about it, the, the um, cast iron skillet that I'm using is more than 50 years old. It was my grandmother's, and so I'm really proud that I still have a little piece of her in my kitchen. And um, yeah, so it's good. So get a. Um, I lost my train of thought there, but hey, stick with me. It'll come back. Cast iron skillets are heavy. Yeah, cast iron skillets, they are heavy, but you know what? Um, if you're like us and, and missing that the gym's closed, you know, pick up two of them 
and do a little curls, right? Cast iron curls. Okay, I'm still uh, still enjoying my dance party from last night. Have um, you know, talking to you out there while while we're baking, you know, that's kind of to me one of the the great things about baking baking is that it's a, a community thing, so you can catch up with with your friends and family when you're doing it. And um, seeing we're all catching up these days online, uh, I don't know if you've had the chance, but if you haven't, look for some of these dance parties because they are fun and a great way to uh, just move your energy around and, and start thinking about something, something else. Lift your spirits a little bit. All right. I don't know if I'm going to fit my fourth banana in here, guys. So I, um, I might want to say that depending on the size of your bananas, you will be fine with three bananas. So um, I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about. One banana, two bananas. <clears throat> Sorry. There's the link for the world kitchen. Oh wait, that's the wrong spot. Whoops. All right, yeah, I see it coming. Okay, so I'm going to put this. I'm going to put about half of this banana on this side. And then I'm going to show people what we've got here. Okay, so our bananas are set in place. And let me show you what I've got here. See that, everyone? So that's about three and a half bananas there. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could slice bananas and put the little circles in there. But I just didn't feel like taking all that time. This was so much, this to me is so much easier. But that being said, let's talk about other fruits. Um, we're using bananas because bananas are plentiful. But if you have a can of pineapple, use that. If you have peaches or even um, apples and pears, go ahead and use that. And um, the recipe, as I posted it, says about two cups of that other fruit. So um, depending on what you're using, um, go ahead and, and, and make the adjustment. Now, I'm going to uh, put my bourbon, uh, because this is a, a boozy bourbon cake, I'm going to put my bourbon right in here. Kind of bourbon are you using? And I'm going to pour it right over the bananas. Now the recipe says to pour it in right when the caramelization is done because I'm doing this on camera and I, uh, I made a, a, teeny, a teeny mistake there of not getting it in before the bananas, but really it's going to be fine. You're going to taste it. Um, yeah, Mark's asking about the bourbon and I'm so excited. Um, I'm using Breaker Bourbon Whiskey. So shout out to Breaker. They're a Southern California distiller. So I'm proud to be using a SoCal product. They're made um, on the Central Coast. And uh, anyway, this is, it's an excellent spirit. So check them out on Facebook or I'm sure you can find their website. It's uh, Breaker Bourbon, BreakerBourbon.com. Yeah, go California. Might even have to make a cocktail soon with that. All right, so next up in our recipe, we need to go ahead and um, whisk together our dry ingredients. So our dry ingredients, we're going to need a cup and a half of flour, a teaspoon and a half of baking powder, one teaspoon of spice, and three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt. So let me go ahead and get that together in my bowl and then we can set that aside. All right, so let's see. Okay, so I pre-measured because, hey, you know, cooking show. So there's my one and a half cups of flour, baking powder, not baking soda. Sometimes people confuse those, and one will give you rise and the other really won't. So one and a half cups. Cups, duh, I just caught myself. One and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And then um, spice. Um, okay, so if, you, if you're looking at the recipe online, you're going to see that I just put one teaspoon of spice. Now, this could be um, cinnamon, this could be nutmeg, 
this could be all spice but um last fall we actually created our own recipe of of pumpkin spice that we call ps love and it's got all of those things that I mentioned in it, plus a hint of turmeric. And I love it in my baked goods. So you can check it out and read more online. But I'm going to add a teaspoon of this. Okay. And let me double check and make sure. I think I missed something. Salt. Okay, yeah, three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt. So... There's a half, and here's a quarter. All right, so you know, you got your dry ingredients, swirl them about, whisk them a little bit, and then set them aside, because then we're gonna move on to our wet ingredients. Another glass bowl so you guys will be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so um, if any of you are baking along with me, it's been, it says I've been at this for 25 minutes. So did any of you make your own buttermilk? If you did, put a comment in, um, in the comments and maybe Mark will see it and he can, um, he can let me know. But um, my buttermilk is ready and yours really should be ready too because if you started it 20 minutes ago, it's, it's definitely ready. So I'm going to add one cup of buttermilk. And I believe it's a uh, half a cup of vegetable oil. Yes, it is. One half cup of vegetable oil. I'm going to whisk these together. Actually, I was supposed to wait for my buttermilk, but I grabbed it. I grabbed it because I was talking about it. But anyway, it shouldn't make much of a difference here. I'm going to add my sugar. which is one cup of granulated sugar. And um, a teaspoon of vanilla. Yeah, I'm just a little, I'm just a little backwards today. And, um, and then I believe that's all of my, my dry ingredients. Yes. Then I'm going to add my eggs. And, um, you know, like I was supposed to put my buttermilk at the end, in at the end, but um, I accidentally popped it in early. So we'll see what happens. I don't think it's going to cause my, my cake to fall. I'm going to whisk up my, my eggs. You want everything to be really nice and smooth. Let's see if you can see this. There you go. See? Very easy with your whisk. And then we're going to gradually add our flour mixture. Now, the thing about the flour, you really, really do not want to over whisk because when you're making a cake and you whisk, you're adding air. And then you're getting lift from your baking powder. So do not over over blend this. You really just want it to get smooth. We're almost there. Mmm, smells so good. I can smell that cinnamon and vanilla. Mmm, the allspice, nutmeg. It all comes through from that PS Love, so it's kind of like I get a little bit of everything. Okay, look, got nice ribbons. It's nice and smooth. So now I'm going to take this batter and I'm going to pour it on top of bananas evenly so you should be able to see me I'm gonna there you go that helps and uh, okay so here we go just gonna pour it even Scrape it out. So Chris Armenta made buttermilk. Cool. And uh, Judith said she's not baking 
She's churning her buttermilk now and ready, ready for the booze. Okay, the booze edition of the show is really coming up. Okay, so now you can see it's all nice and even. Now, in my recipe, I have, um, I have suggested a couple options. So, um, of course, the bourbon is optional. If you don't want a boozy upside down cake, don't add the booze. Simple as that. I put the booze into the caramel, but um, if you don't want it, don't add it. And as you saw, I added mine really towards the tail end there. Now, if you want to kick up the booze, <coughs> you could go ahead and substitute your one teaspoon of vanilla with a teaspoon of bourbon. And that would kick up your booze there and, um, you know, it would have a, a slightly different flavor. Another one of the options that I mentioned was about nuts. Now, nuts are something that uh, I'm always for adding them to any any baked product. Oh, nuts. Oh, nuts, right. That's kind of how we roll. We're nuts. But uh, anyway, I, um, I think that they could easily be added to the caramel, but also they could be added to the bottom of the um, uh, up to the cake and I actually have some peanuts setting aside and so I'm going to experiment because why not and I'm going to sprinkle some peanuts onto the bottom of my cake Are because they yeah they're fresh chopped peanuts and um, I'm going to just see what happens because this cake's going to be flipped over and I really think the peanuts will give it like a nice little crust, crusty, crunchy bottom. So who doesn't like a crunchy bottom? All right. And now let's put it in the oven. And I'm going to set my timer uh, for 35 to 40 minutes. Now I I made life easy for you guys, and you're going to love this. We can talk for a little bit. You can stick around. If you're popping your cake in the oven, you literally have 35 to 40 more minutes to hang out with me. But if you want to see what a finished um, cake product looks like, I'm going to show you what I did yesterday when I was getting ready. Yesterday... I made this and you can see a really nice picture of it on my blog post this is a cake an, um, a boozy upside down cake that I did with peaches I actually had some frozen peaches uh, left over from the growing season last summer and after we finished our big jamming of one of our most popular jams which is just peachy and uh, so I did peaches yesterday and I'm really excited. I made Mark keep his hands off of it because I said it would look so much better on, um, on the show if we didn't cut it all up. But we're going to cut this up, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways to, to serve it, too. So that's what the cake looks like. You can see that the, the fruit is really nice and caramelized, and it's set so nicely on the tray. Now, how did we do this? Okay, after the cake comes out of the oven, you have to let it sit for about 10-15 minutes to just let the, um, the caramel set. Then you're going to run your knife around the edge of your cast iron skillet to loosen it and then flip it into your serving dish and let it sit until it's warm to room temperature and then go ahead and serve it. So this one's really, this one's really set up because it was done yesterday afternoon. So it's uh, almost 24 hours old. But the nice thing about this uh, style cake, um, it's really nicely, um, with the caramel, it keeps really well. So this should keep for easily um, throughout the week, unless you have it tomorrow for, for Easter or enjoy it later today for another Passover dinner. So, so we have that. Let's see. Let's see what people are saying. Um, 
Okay, see, there are people out there who like crunchy bottoms just like us. Thanks, Craig. I know I'm full of the double entendres, especially when I'm talking and working without a script and I'm just off the top of my head. But anyway, I think Sharon will love it too. Hi, Sharon, if you're there. Gosh, we've we've known we've known Craig and Sharon since our uh, days back in Ohio. If you don't know, um, if you don't know us from our Midwestern roots, um, we are actually uh, Buckeyes. I grew up just out of the Cleveland area, and Mark grew up um, not too far from the shoe. So go Buckeyes! And we've been in California now for almost 25 years. So we like to think of ourselves as. Um, having a little bit of the best of both of those worlds with us. Shout Through, out to the refectory. Oh yeah, shout out to the refectory. Um, Mark spent years with the team at the refectory and this restaurant is exceptional. And uh, once, you they're know- doing, They're doing uh, home meals. Oh wow, so Mark is, Mark's just telling me okay, that um, if you're in Columbus, Ohio, the refectory is doing home meals and you can get their gourmet, exceptional foods um, to go. So check them out and support them. They have been a winner of Wine Spectator and so many awards over the years, um, like decades, and uh, they're still really, really going strong. So shout out to the refectory. And um, oh, look, I've got um, Karina, Karina from Venezuela. Hi. Um, um, buenos dias or buenas tardes. What I don't know what we are at this point, but anyway, thank you for joining in, and I hope you really enjoyed this recipe. Um, let's see. Now ready for the booze. Okay, yeah, we're gonna do that. And um, okay, excellent. So this is awesome. All right. So your cakes are in the oven and you've got easily 30 more minutes. So I'm going to actually serve up a piece of the cake that I have here and show you how we can serve it differently. Now, you can serve it just as it is, or you can top it with ice cream, which would be wonderful, especially if it was warm, or you can top it with whipped cream. Now, um, whipped cream, if you if you keep heavy whipping cream around, which I highly recommend it because it's so versatile, you can make your own half and half by adding a little milk. You can make your own whipped cream. Um, if you're like our friend Judith who's watching, you can churn your own butter with half, with um, heavy whipping cream. So really, go to town and make your own fun because uh, uh, I just got the word yesterday that here in California, we are um, gearing up for five more weeks of isolation and self, and self, uh, yeah, the peanut gallery just threw me off there, but anyway, self isolating and, um, and only going out for essential, um, essential services and, um, until May 15th. So if you do go to the grocery store, pick up some of these fun foods that I'm mentioning, mentioning, and, um, and go ahead and try to make your own ingredients because um, you know it's so easy to go out and and buy all these little things when you're doing a recipe. But really, what my what my goal is to help you with here is to teach you how to improvise and use what you have on hand. Now that being said, I'm going to add a cautionary note: we're baking. Baking is precise. We can improvise on things like our spice, but we cannot improvise on our quantities, like our one cup of buttermilk. Um, if, we, if we just put one cup of milk in instead of buttermilk, we would not get the same texture in our cake. So these are things that cannot be improv improvised. Do you not like bourbon? Okay. How about spiced rum? How about uh, flavored... Um, a flavored vodka. Um, there's some really interesting gins out there. I personally made, and I'll show you over the summer. I I have a jam that we, that we call Fig Love, and um, I had I, I did my whole bumper crop of of jams, but then I had I had figs left over, and I said to myself, Oh, I wonder if a fig vodka would be good, and so. I actually made this. 
So I would actually consider if I was um, putting figs, which I could use dried figs and raisins also, like if you don't have any fresh fruit or canned fruit, why not use figs? Why not use prunes? Why not use, I think someone said they're using trail mix, which I think is so cool. Anyway, but I would maybe add this fig vodka because I have it on hand. So what my point is, is use what you have on hand. Um, and I could even add, to kick up my flavor, a little bit of jam. So that's like a, a secret trick for you. If you, have, um, if you have jam, if you have some frozen strawberries, but then some strawberry jam, add a little bit of it to it because it'll definitely enhance your flavor. But with regards to your cake batter, you must be precise. So, you know, that's just my little tip. Remember that. Uh, maybe next week we'll do something a little bit more savory and uh, you can really see how you can uh, swap up your ingredients once you know your basic flavor profiles. And you can, you can really do so much with so little. You'll never look in your refrigerator again and say, ah, nothing to eat. Um, okay, so let me grab a plate and, and plate up a little bit of my cake. Judith wants to know if you can use Grand Marnier. Oh, heck yes. Use Grand Marnier. In fact, you know what I would suggest um, with the Grand Marnier? I would suggest that you um, maybe use, uh, do a citrus bottom. Slice your orange slices from your tree uh, very thin and put them into the, um, into the caramel just like you would uh, pineapple rings. And, and add the Grand Marnier. Yeah, I think that would be good. Great suggestion, Judith. Let's see, where is my pie server or my cutter? Oh, well. I'll just grab a handy knife. Let's see. So loose on the booze, but tight on the rest. Yeah, you know, like I said, when I was making the um, the caramel the caramel topping. Okay, the caramel topping um, is really not scientific in the sense that baking really is science. So I said you could use brown sugar, you could use it light or dark, you could also use pure cane sugar, and um, I mean. I think that you know you you would get the same result, although you might not have to have you might have to caramel it just a little bit longer to get that nice bro, um, brown quality. Okay, so here's what the cake looks like. You can see it's got a nice yellow yellow cake, and then we have our fruit. And uh, I happen to have some ice cream. How about kumquat? Kumquats. Judith. Really? Judith. Judith, are you heckling me? <laughs> anyway, I appreciate the heckles. I actually love kumquats, and I made a jam out of kumquats. People think, you know, kumquats are definitely an acquired taste, but I made a, a jam. It's been out of... Um, it's been out of my rotation for a year or so, but I might I might have to bring it back. I call it drunken honey, and I take those kumquats and I I drunk them up with wild turkey, and it is like an elixir, like a like a marmalade, like you've never had before. So I'm saying it might come back because I personally like kumquats. I would use them. Okay, ice cream. I'm gonna put a little scoop of ice cream on top of my top of my cake and I'm gonna let Mark be the taste tester here um, yum look at that what do you think okay and uh, hey um, you wanna you wanna booze it up a little bit do this Look, he's ready. He's here. He's so ready. So you want you want to booze it up? Oh, Serve it, it like this to your to your friend. Take one of your small little shot glasses if you have that. And we should get a picture of that. Ooh, that's nice. And check that out. Let me get my camera. Look at that. So we've got a little nip on the side to go with our sweet 
Oh, we're taking pictures. Nice. So we got our little nip on the side, along with our cake and our ice cream. And I'm going to take a little bite, but then I swear I'm going to give this off. Now keep in mind, the one that I did yesterday, I did with peaches. So this one is, is peach, and we're doing banana today, so I'm really excited. Later I'm going to be able to try both. Mmm. Mmm. Yum. So the, um, the bourbon from the caramel sauce really seeps into the cake, and it's super moist. It's super dense. Um, really a nice, a nice flavor. You can make this in the fall. You can make this in the summer with fresh peaches or fresh, fresh berries or fresh fruit from your tree. Like I said, maybe try citrus. I think they would be kind of interesting. Um, but wow, it's, it's really good. And I hope you'll let me know how yours turns out at home. Here you go, honey. Mmm. All right. So there you have it. We have made a boozy upside down cake. If you've baked along with me, yours is still about 20 minutes away from being done. So I'm happy to hang out here with you. I'm happy to talk with you about any other questions that you might have from the kitchen or about sleepers or about the, um, the World Central Kitchen or about um, you know, how we're just holding up. How are you holding up out there? Um, what have you been doing for fun to keep things interesting? Um, we've had a ton of rain here in California and today is actually the first day that we've had sun since last Sunday. So I'm so excited. Uh, my big thrill of the day is going to be taking my dog for a walk. So um, that's about the only, Your grand dog. yeah, my grand dog, um, Buddy. Buddy is Lydia's dog, but we are um, taking care of Buddy while Lydia is uh, finishing up college. So um, shout out to her. She was to walk the stage and graduate from San Jose State in May. That's not happening, but um, maybe we'll celebrate in the future in another way. And I want to say to all of you out there, um, you all have special events and special occasions that have been um, postponed and disrupted. And so I just want to send congratulations out to all the college graduates, all the high school graduates. Um, I hope that you'll, you'll create memories when you can in the future, even though you can't do it on the day that you plan to. Congratulations to um, newly married couples. I have a friend whose daughter got married two weeks ago and she's planning on doing her wedding again uh, once this, um, this pandemic uh, gets under control. Congratulations to all the, you know, the new babies and um, to all the celebrations, um, 50th wedding anniversaries, you know, milestone birthdays, whatever it is you've, you've got going on that, um, that seems to be taking a, a step back. Uh, Find, find, find your own little way to celebrate now, and, uh, and hopefully you'll get to do something fun in the future. And, and while, I'm, while I'm celebrating and sending shout-outs, you, you may not have heard it, but in the beginning I sent a shout-out to all the healthcare workers and essential workers that are, are working so hard to keep us all safe. All of the doctors, the nurses, the technicians, the labs, the scientists, everyone who is working to get our life back to a semblance of normal. I thank you. So big shout out. And even and and to all of the 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 essential workers in our grocery stores, in our pharmacies, um, every restaurant that is doing their damnedest to stay open. Big shout outs to you. Um, I'm 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 so I'm so in awe of everything that you're doing and and I thank you so much for that. And um, you know, if 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 you've been personally touched by um, the COVID-19, and you have um, you've lost somebody or you're sick yourself, 
and this is you know you're tuning in because um, you know you're just trying to get better and 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 cheer up a little bit thank you for being here and also accept my my deepest my deepest sympathies so um, uh, we're here we're here we're here for you and we're able to answer you know questions and just you know share our share our humanness and and anyway that's what it's all about right now so uh, Judah anyway said, Judah said she's doing the Getty art challenge I don't know what that is but it's not going to do the second one do it okay Getty art challenge that might be how after I, I do my big thrill of walking the dog around the block I'm gonna come back and do the Getty art challenge now if you're tuning in from you know someplace around the globe or even across the country maybe you're not familiar with our world-class art uh, museums that are the Getty. We have um, we have two of them. We have the Getty Villa and we have the Central Getty and the collections are exceptional. So if you ever get to come to Los Angeles, our life back to a semblance of normal, I thank you. So big shout out. And even and, and to all of the 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 essential workers in our grocery stores, in our pharmacies, um, every restaurant that is doing their damnedest to stay open big shout outs to you um i'm 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 so i'm so in awe of everything that you're doing and and i thank you so much for that and um you know if 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 you've been personally touched by um the covid 19 and you have um you've lost somebody or you're sick yourself and this is you know you're tuning in because um you know, you're just trying to get better and, and, and cheer up a little bit. Thank you for being here and also accept my, my deepest, my deepest sympathies. So, um, uh, we're here, we're here, we're here for you and we're able to answer, you know, questions and just, you know, share our, share our humanness. And, and anyway, that's what it's all about right now. So, uh, Judah anyway, said, Judah said she's doing the Getty art challenge. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to do the second one. Do it. Okay, Getty Art Challenge. That might be how, after I, I do my big thrill of walking the dog around the block, I'm going to come back and do the Getty Art Challenge. Now, if you're tuning in from, you know, someplace around the globe or even across the country, maybe you're not familiar with our world-class art uh, museums that are the Getty. We have... Um, we have two of them. We have the Getty Villa and we have the Central Getty and the collections are exceptional. So if you ever get to come to Los Angeles, uh, take a break from the beach for a minute and go and visit these incredible museums. They have quite, quite the collection. The uh, European collections, um, Asian collections, uh, amazing artists from the United States everywhere. They're awesome. Mark just put up a, a post for that too. Um, okay, cool. So let's see. We made sushi last night. It was a fun family activity. You know what? I bet that was fun. I've never made sushi at home, but I hear that if you're safe, I actually um, made sashimi. We have a friend who's uh, who fishes and he catches a lot of fish. And when he when he shares, we eat a lot of fresh raw fish. Um, uh, what kind of fish is that that I, that I like so much, Mark? Yellowtail. Yellowtail. Yeah, that's what we like. So we we've made... Yellowtail, man. Oh, wow. It, when he hauls in the yellowtail, I make sashimi. And if it happens anytime soon, I will make sashimi on Taste From Home because it's easy and it is exceptional. It's like, but, it's like butter. So... Um, something you would really, really like to make. But yeah, I, I'm so happy. It looks like Chris made sushi, so I'm looking forward. I'll have to go check her out later and, and see if she posted any pictures and see what it looked like. Um, okay. I'm post, um, the Blues Challenge. I don't know what the Blues Challenge is. The Marcus and Rita print up do? Our friends from oh, the oh, okay. Oh, this is something fun too. So see, now okay. we're moving into the arts. You know, because because we've got the culinary arts, what I'm doing here. Judith mentioned um, something she's going to be doing with the Getty, which is which is um, the art, art community. But we're also big fans of music. And one of our favorites is the Jazz at Lincoln Center. We love jazz. The orchestra. 
and um, they have an orchestra that we have been seeing tour around the world for probably the last 15 years. And um, if anyone from um, Jazz at Lincoln Center is watching, um, I do want to send a shout out, out to um, Wynton Marsalis and our deepest uh, sympathy as he lost his dearly beloved father, Ellis Marsalis Jr. last week to um, coronavirus. And um, anyway, uh, so this is, this is touching all of us. And uh, anyway, the, there are members from the Jazz at Lincoln Center who are doing some challenges to keep things interesting while they're not touring. And tell me again, Mark, um, is, it, is it Marcus? Marcus and Risa Printup. Okay, so Marcus and Risa Printup, they actually have, is it on YouTube? No, they, they have a website. Oh, oh, they have a website. Okay, so it's cool. Absolutely. So you, you can actually go to them, and you can give them any lyrics that you come up with, and they're going to turn it into a jazz blues. A, a blues song. A blues song. A 12 bar blues. A 12 bars, 12 bars of blues. So, um, yeah, go check them and, out. And it's also designed for K through 12. Oh, yeah. K through 5. They oh, have yeah. Programs. Thank you. Um, he's, he's telling me in the background, they actually designed this for K through 12 classrooms. And it's been such a success that they decided to open it up to the rest of us so that we can have some fun too. And so all you have to do is visit the website. Mark has, has um, posted it under Blues Challenge in these comments and visit them. Visit them with your kids. Visit them with your boyfriend, your husband, your girlfriend, your grandma, anyone, and um, give them the words that are filling your head. And, um, you know, if you're like us, you're having crazy dreams during this time and um, and really, really uh, wild words popping in out of nowhere. We'll give them your words and they will create you a 12 bar blues and it'll be all original. It'll be really fun. So yeah, so let me tell me anything else if anybody's there and they want to know about this. Um, we're wrapping up around our hour. I'm going to look in the oven and see exactly how my cake is doing. My pot holder. And uh, it says um, in the recipe that you want to rotate your cake about halfway through just to make sure that it gets an even, an even bake. I want to show you this though. I don't normally take my cake out, it down. but you can see, oh, it's looking good. It's still wobbly in the middle, which means it's got a ways to go, but the nuts, oh, wow. I think that was, a, that was a, a secret pro tip that I added those nuts at the end. It oh, smells yeah. so good, too. So if you added nuts for a, what did I call it, a crusty bottom? Was it a chunky bottom? Was it a crusty bottom? Was it a, anyway, if you added nuts, uh, make sure you share your um, results and let me know what you thought of that. Let's see. Um, yeah, so, so what else can we talk about here? Um, I think that we have really covered the, the recipe. Um, what'd you think of the cake, Mark? Uh, okay. <laughs> I didn't like it. He hated it. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad I asked. Um, I'm sorry that you didn't like it. I, I guess Can I try it again? maybe my neighbors, because I live in a condominium, maybe my neighbors will take the rest. Ha ha. I might like to try another piece. You might like to try another piece. Yeah, sure. Um, oh, well, um, you know, what, what I wanted to also talk about is whipped cream. I did, I did mention it a little bit, but I'm, I'm not going to make whipped cream today. But if you have heavy whipping cream at home and any sort of blender device from a Nutribullet to a, a regular blender to just a whisk, you can make your own whipping, your, your own whipped cream in less than five to 10 minutes, depending on what device you use. And uh, all you do is take a cup of your heavy whipping cream, whip, 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 whip it up. Once it's starting to get stiff 
peak forms, you're going to add about, to a cup, I would maybe add a tablespoon of sugar because I like to keep it um, not so sweet. So um, start with one teaspoon to, to a tablespoon, which would be three teaspoons. And uh, then I would booze it up just to get a little bit more of that bourbon or whatever spirit you use going through it. And I would add about a tablespoon of bourbon. No, not a tape. Um, hmm. Would I add a tablespoon? Yeah, I would probably add about a tablespoon and just keep whipping it until it got to the, the consistency and the stiffness that I wanted to actually put it on top of my cake. But again, with the booze, start with one teaspoon and work your way up because you don't want to have your whipped cream uh, fall and not be able to get stiff peaks. So, uh, all right. Well, um, I think I'm going to say goodbye for now. And I hope that you'll come back next Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1 p.m. Uh, uh, Eastern Standard Time, or what does that make me in, uh, I have friends in, in France and, and uh, Germany watching, I think that's about 9 p.m. European time. So uh, come back next, next Saturday morning, and we're going to actually have a stakeout. I'm going to show you how to make, right here on your stove, the most perfect steak that's going to have the greatest grilled flavor without having to step outside and use the grill. So uh, yeah, come back next week and keep the comments coming. I, um, I thank you all for showing up and I'm sending you out love and, um, and I just want you to know that uh, we're here to answer any questions for you. So um, visit our website at sleepersgourmet.com and you know leave a comment there on the recipe. Uh, do some shopping and um, stock up your pantry, buy something for a friend, or um, you know, just just say hi. So on that note, bye. We love you guys. Hi everyone, look, I'm back. Uh, my cake's out of the oven, and so because it's so exciting, an upside-down cake, uh, part of the fun is the reveal of what it looks like when you flip it. So I decided to come back to show you what my my upside-down cake looks like. So if if you if you missed if you missed the recipe earlier when we were baking together at 10 a.m. Pacific time, don't worry. We have the live video saved and we'll reshare it. And the recipe is on our blog. You can just go to sleepersgourmet.com, look under the blog for our boozy upside down cake, and uh, you'll get all the details there. And um, also, I want to say while I'm uh, while I'm here and uh, giving people just a chance to, to get settled in. I want to say that um, who knew, but on April 20th, also known as 420, it's National Upside Down Cake Day. So if you didn't bake an upside down boozy cake with me today, make sure you bake one sometime in the next uh, week to 10 days. Today's the 11th, so you've got nine days to uh, you know, let your bananas brown or find a can of pineapple or a couple apples or whatever you have in your pantry. I make a lot of um, suggestions for substitute fruits in the recipe, but uh, gather it together and make your own boozy upside down cake and then show us what your bottom looks like. So, um, all right, so I'm going to show you the cake and uh, I, if you if you were with me earlier, you saw me improv on the fly and actually add about a half a cup of peanuts, uh, chopped peanuts, to my cake before I put it in the oven. So I want to show you what that looks like here. Look at that. So this is actually going to be the bottom of the cake. And we're going to flip it over and I'm going to show you the top. So my cake, uh, my cake has been um, cooling for about 15 minutes, as I suggested.
So I'm now going to loosen the sides of the cake, just cutting around it with a little, little spatula to get around all the sides of the cake. And um, I've got a platter here, so I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to set it up. And hopefully this is going to work. This is kind of, this, is, this will be fun. Hey, that looks pretty good. All right, great. All right, so I can actually maneuver. My, my pan um, is not too hot. So I'm going to pick this up, and I'm going to put it over, and then flip. I, I hear it falling, falling out of the cast iron skillet. Woo, look at that. Look at how clean the pan is. Look at this, I told you this recipe was a no mess, no fuss recipe. You can see the steam coming off and check this out. This one, the recipe with the browned bananas. Look at how beautiful that looks. Look at that. If little pieces fall off, like you can see there's a teeny hole there, just put that back in. It's no big deal. So there, there you have it. It's our boozy upside down cake. This one with bananas. See that? And uh, I'm gonna let it cool for probably another 30 minutes to an hour before we have a, a slice of it because the uh, the recipe that I made yesterday when I was um, just just prepping to make sure it would work work for this short amount of time, I actually used peaches. So now in my kitchen, I actually have a banana version and a peach version. And let me show you before I leave what that peach version looked like, just so you can see the toppings were a little different. Look at that. So these peaches were frozen. So um, as I as I mentioned earlier, they were a frozen peach. So they were chopped. So they have a little bit. Um, the the topping is not quite um, as beautifully and intricately designed as it may be if it was summertime and I was using fresh peaches and I actually created a beautiful artistic circle pattern uh, in my in my caramel. But but as you can see. I think it's it's beautiful. It's rustic. It's uh, it's gorgeous, and it's really tasty. We we had a slice earlier, so looking forward to having more. And uh, one more look at the banana version. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this, and uh, please share pictures of your the upside down cake with sleepers here at sleepers gourmet on instagram at sleepers gourmet you can tweet us at sleepers gourmet you can comment at sleepersgourmet.com you can pretty much catch us everywhere at sleepers gourmet so thank you so much for stopping by and i hope everyone has a beautiful passover and a wonderful easter tomorrow and i look forward to coming back and uh cooking with you again next Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time, not 1 p.m. Pacific time. No, it's 1 p.m. Eastern time, 10 a.m. Pacific time. I'll be coming back with you, back to you with another, uh, another episode of Tastes from Home. And uh, next week, we're going to have a steak out. I'm going to show you how to make a gorgeous, delicious, juicy, flavorful steak with my cast iron skillet. We're not gonna be grilling outside, who knows what the weather will be, but this, this steak, you're gonna love it. So tune in next week and you'll be able to get this savory recipe. All right, bye everyone.